So Andy, you recently jousted at the World Championships in Sydney. How did it feel to go to the other side of the world and compete against the Australians? I hear one of them is the current world champion. <laughs> Yeah, Phil Leach is a brilliant jouster and a worthy world champion. It, it's fantastic, fantastic opportunities given to me by the Royal Army. So this year, as well as going to Australia and Sydney jousting, going to Poland and going to France to, to joust and take the sort of the Royal Army's flag around the world has been fantastic. As for Sydney, Australia, well, I'd say in some ways it was once in a lifetime. There have been some jousters over there who have been jousting since the early 90s, a chap called Rod Walker, who is known as a, a world-renowned jouster. And so to have the world champion, Rod Walker, and young jousters like Cliff there was, uh, was a superb opportunity to kind of see where I am in, in world jousting. I found out I was at the top. <laughs> Over those two days, I think the Australians are coming back at Easter to, to joust here. And I know Phil is, and I know be, he'll be keen to uh, to uh, get his revenge. So it's all good fun. So you're used to jousting all around the world, but how does the experience of jousting such a long way away from home compare to competing on home turf? I think jousting away from the Royal Army's tilt yard is a blessed relief. Because when you're at home, of course, everyone wants you to do well. You're representing Yorkshire, the Royal Armouries, England, and so there's a lot of pressure. And being the host as well, you're thinking about bazillion other things. When I go to Australia or France or wherever I might just, I'm given a horse, I'm told to go that way, I take a big stick and I hit people. Jousting away from home is much, much easier because you don't have all that paraphernalia going on. You can really focus on the job. And I'm very good at just hitting people. So how do you prepare for a joust on the other side of the world? The Royal Armouries has given me a fantastic foundation to be able to joust on different horses, in different climates, and different uh, venues. Uh, and so having now, this 2018 will be my 25th year of representing the Royal Armouries, one way or another, jousting. And so you'd think I'd, I'd get it back right by now, and I have. So things generally don't phase me too much. So preparation is just making sure I've, I've packed everything, including a toothbrush and, uh, and uh, getting the right flight. As for the rest of it, it's just strapping that armour on, getting a, a stride a horse, getting the horse down the uh, other end at 30 miles an hour, hitting a bloke in the middle. It's not difficult, really. So with the rise of programmes like Game of Thrones, medieval sports like jousting are growing in popularity. What's it like to be at the centre of an evolving sport? Do you notice the change? I'm very lucky. I've seen jousting evolve over the last 25, 30 years and it couldn't have made uh, greater strides. Uh, when I first uh, saw jousting, it was what we would refer to today as sort of string mail Hollywood jousting. Very exciting, great skill level, but it wasn't history. Now, with some of the people doing stuff in Europe, America and Australia, uh, and their attention to detail means that we're using now generally solid lances with very vicious coronel ends on because we're wearing the right armour. A lot of the chaps now are riding the right horses, destriere, stallions of oh, Spanish breeding. So not only has the sport got harder and more intense, but the imagery that the visitor comes to see uh, is nearer reality. So when we joust now, and certainly some of the guys, again, as I say, in Europe, are doing extraordinary things. So as a sportsman, it's a lot more fun, a lot more pressure, but for visitor and, uh, and uh, audiences, it's an extraordinary thing to see history come alive. Jousting isn't just a rising sport. It requires skill, strength and agility. How long do you think until we'll be seeing athletes jousting at the Olympics? People often ask about jousting in the Olympics, and it's certainly been in the news. My own personal views on it, it's a, it's a bit like other sports. For example, karate is a new sport coming to, uh, to the Olympics, but it's taken them 30 years. Because there's all these different associations. Getting one association and one type is very difficult. The same with jousting. There are lots of different forms of jousting and different associations. As far as it being a sport that should be in the Olympics, well, yeah, 
you do need to be a superb horseman. You do need to have great hand-eye coordination. The fitter you are, the quicker your reaction, the better you're more likely to be. So all the things needed to be a Olympic sport should be there. And certainly the colour, the speed and the, and the uh, excitement of watching it is exactly the same as Formula One. Uh, it's, it's beautiful and stunning and exhilarating. So there's lots of reasons it should be in the Olympics. I don't think it'll happen in my lifetime. Okay, so if not the Olympics, what's next for Andy Dean? What's next for Andy Dean? Well, I, kept, I said about 2011 that that was my last joust and I'm still going. I think the next thing is 2020. There is an extraordinary tournament called the Field of Cloth of Gold, put on by Henry VIII and Francis I, and it was the biggest tournament the world had ever seen. And if we can recreate that in a perfect world, I'd like to be a, a part of that and get all those jousters that I've talked about from all those different sort of fraternities to come together for the biggest, most stunning tournament the world has ever seen in the 20th or 21st century. That's what I'd like. The Royal Army is at the centre of the greatest tournament modern man has ever seen.